Mark chapter 14 It was now two days before the feast of the Passover and unleavened bread. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for a way to arrest Jesus on a false charge and put him to death. But they said, Not during the festival, for there might be trouble among the people. Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper. As he was reclining at dinner, a woman entered, carrying an alabaster jar of expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfumed oil on Jesus' head. Then some of them became angry and said, What a useless waste of perfume! It could have been sold for more than 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor. And they criticized her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why are you troubling her? What she has just done for me is a very charitable work. At any time you can help the poor. For you always have them with you. But you will not have me forever. This woman did what she had to do. She anointed my body for burial before I die. Truly, I say to you, wherever the good news is proclaimed, and this will be throughout the world, what she has done will be told in praise of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. On hearing him, they were excited and promised to give him money. So Judas started planning the best way to hand Jesus over to them. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the day when the Passover lamb was killed, the disciples asked him, Where would you have us go to prepare the Passover meal for you? So Jesus sent two of his disciples with these instructions. Go into the city, and there a man will come to you carrying a jar of water. Follow him to the house he enters, and say to the owner, The master says, Where is the room where I may eat the Passover meal with my disciples? Then he will show you a large room upstairs already arranged and furnished. There you will prepare for us. The disciples went off. When they reached the city, they found everything just as Jesus had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were at table eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who shares my meal. They were deeply distressed at hearing this and asked him one after the other, You don't mean me, do you? And Jesus answered, It is one of your twelve, one who dips his bread in the dish with me. The Son of Man is going as the scriptures say he will, but a loss for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Better for him if he had never been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And he said, Take this, it is my body. Then he took a cup, and after he had given thanks, he passed it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not taste the fruit of the wine again, until that day when I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After singing psalms of praise, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, All of you will be dismayed, and fall away. For the scripture says, 
I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered but after I am raised I will go to Galilee ahead of you Then Peter said to him Even though all the others fall away I will not And Jesus replied Truly I say to you Today this very night before the cock crows twice you will deny me three times but peter insisted though i have to die with you i will never deny you and all of them said the same they came to a place which is called gethsemane and jesus said to his disciples sit here while i pray but he took peter james and john along with him and becoming filled with fear and distress he said to them my soul is full of sorrow even to death remain here and stay awake then he went a little further on and fell to the ground praying that if possible the sar might pass him by jesus said abba father all things are possible for you take this cup away from me yet not what i want but what you want then he came and found them asleep and he said to peter simon are you sleeping couldn't you stay awake for one hour stay awake and pray all of you so that you may not slip into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the body is weak and going away he prayed saying the same words when he came back to the disciples he found them asleep again they could not keep their eyes open and they did not know what to say to him when he came back the third time he said to them are you still sleeping and resting it is all over the time has come the son of man is now given into the hands of sinners get up let us go look the one who betrays me is approaching while jesus was still speaking judas one of the 12 came up with him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs who had been sent by the chief priests the teachers of the law and the elders the traitor had arranged a signal for them the one i kiss he is the man arrest him and take him away under guard so when he came he went directly to jesus and said master master and kissed him then they seized jesus and arrested him one of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant cutting off his ear jesus turned to them and said so you have set out against a robber did you need swords and clubs to arrest me day after day i was among you teaching in the temple and you did not arrest me but let the scriptures be fulfilled then they all deserted him and fled a young man covered by nothing but a linen cloth followed jesus when they took hold of him he left the cloth in their hands and fled away naked they led jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests assembled with the elders and the teachers of the law Peter had followed him at a distance and went right into the courtyard of the high priest where he sat with the guards warming himself at the fire now the chief priest and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus so that they might put him to death but they were unable to find anything even though many came up to speak falsely against him their evidence did not agree at last some stood up and gave this false witness we heard him say 
I will destroy this temple made by human hands and in 3 days I will build another not made by human hands but even so their evidence did not agree the high priest then stood up in the midst of them and asked Jesus have you no answer at all what about this evidence against you but Jesus was silent and made no reply the high priest put a second question to him are you the christ the son of the blessed one then jesus answered i am and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the most powerful and coming with the clouds of heaven round him and coming with the clouds of heaven around him Then the high priest tearing his garments to show his horror said what more evidence do we need you have just heard his blasphemous words what is your decision they all condemned jesus saying he must die some of them began to spit on jesus and blindfolding him they struck him and said play the prophet and the gods set upon him with blows while peter was below in the courtyard a servant girl of the high priest came by noticing peter beside the fire she looked straight at him and said you also were with jesus the nazarene but he denied it I don't know or understand what you are talking about and he went out through the gateway and a cock crowed the servant girl saw him there and told the bystanders this man is one of them but peter denied it again after a little while those standing nearby said to peter of course you are one of them you are a galilean aren't you and peter began to justify himself with curses and oaths i don't know the man you are talking about just then a cock crowed a second time and peter remembered what jesus had said to him before the cock crows twice you will deny me three times and he broke down and wept Mark chapter 15 Early in the morning the chief priests the elders and the teachers of the law that is the whole council or sanhedrin had their plan ready they put Jesus in chains led him away and handed him over to Pilate Pilate asked him are you the king of the Jews Jesus answered you say so as the chief priests accused jesus of many things pilate asked him again have you no answer at all see how many charges they bring against you but jesus gave no further answers much to pilate's surprise at every passover festival pilate used to free any prisoner the people asked for Now there was a man called Barabbas jailed with the rioters who had committed murder in the uprising when the crowd went up to ask Pilate the usual favor he said to them do you want me to set free the king of the Jews for he realized that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him out of envy but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to ask instead for the release of barabbas pilate replied and what shall i do with the man you call king of the jews the crowd shouted back crucify him pilate asked what evil has he done but they shouted the louder crucify him as pilate wanted to please the people he freed barabbas 
and having had Jesus flogged, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers took him inside the courtyard, known as the Praetorium, and called the rest of their companions. They clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting a crown of thorns, they forced it onto his head. Then they began saluting him, Long life to the king of the Jews. With a stick they gave him blows on the head and spat on him. Then they knelt down, pretending to worship him. When they had finished mocking him, they pulled off the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. The soldiers led him out of the city to crucify him. On the way, they met Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country, and forced him to carry the cross of Jesus. When they had led him to the place called Golgotha, which means the skull, they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he would not take it. Then they nailed him to the cross and divided his clothes among themselves, costing lords to decide what every man should take. It was about nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The statement of his offense was displayed above his head, and it reads, The King of the Jews. They also crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And with lawless ones he was numbered. People passing by laughed at him, shook their heads and jeered, Aha, so you are able to tear down the temple and build it up in three days? Save yourself now and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him, saying to one another, The man who saved others cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from his cross, and then we will believe in him. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus insulted him. When noon came, darkness fell over the whole land and lasted until three o'clock. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you deserted me? As soon as they heard these words, some of the bystanders said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And one of them went quickly to fill a sponge with bitter wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink, saying, Now let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus uttered a loud cry, and gave up his spirit. And immediately the curtain that enclosed the temple sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The captain who was standing in front of him saw how Jesus died and heard the cry he gave. And he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salome, who had followed Jesus when he was in Galilee and saw to his needs. There were also others who had come up with him to Jerusalem. It was now evening, and as it was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea boldly went to Pilate 
and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph was a respected member of the council who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God. Pilate was surprised that Jesus should have died so soon. So he summoned the captain and inquired if Jesus was already dead. After hearing the captain, he let Joseph have the body. Joseph took it down and wrapped it in the linen sheet he had bought. He laid the body in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock and rolled a stone across the entrance to the tomb. Now Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Joseph took note of where the body had been laid. Mark chapter 16 When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought the spices so that they might go and anoint the body. And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they looked up, they noticed that the stone had already been rolled away. It was a very big stone. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man in a white robe seated on the right, and they were amazed. But he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised and is not here. This is, however, the place where they laid him. Now go and tell his disciples and Peter, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you. The women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they were so afraid that they said nothing to anyone. After Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary of Magdala, from whom he had driven out seven demons. She went and reported the news to his followers, who were now mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he lived and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he showed himself in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. These men also went back and told the others, but they did not believe them. Later, Jesus showed himself to the eleven while they were at table. He reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart in refusing to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Then he told them, Go out to the whole world and proclaim the good news to all creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved. The one who refuses to believe will be condemned. Signs like these will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons and speak new languages. They will pick up snakes and if they drink anything poisonous they will be unharmed. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will be healed. So then after speaking to them the Lord Jesus was taken up into heaven and took his place at the right hand of God. The eleven went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it.